step down this week. I'm getting better. Every day, my spirit is high. I will return. And we will work together for Arizona. Gabrielle Gifford stepped down from Congress last month amid um, emotional scenes. An American hero is now entering the race to replace her. Ron Barber was Gifford's district director and was with her on the day she was shot. He was wounded himself. Now he hopes to carry on her mission. This is his only national interview. And Ron Barber joins me now. Mr. Barber, welcome. Thank you very much for having me tonight. I, I love... I love the inspiration of this story. I love the fact that you, just like Gabby Giffords, have fought back from this appalling day last January, and you're now prepared to put public service ahead of anything that you might otherwise want to do. Tell me about this decision. Why did you come to it? Well, the decision really started uh, when Congresswoman Giffords looked right at me and said, uh, Ron, will you run? And uh, I told her, that it was a decision that I'd really have to think a lot about, uh, a lot of considerations, uh, my family, my own well-being in terms of being able to do this, and whether it was right for the district. Um, very hard to say no to Congresswoman Giffords. I've never said no to her in my life as we've worked together over the last five years. But I did go away from that conversation and gave it considerable thought, looked at the pros and cons, and finally I was able to say to her, uh, Congresswoman, I will do that. and. Uh, I'll be proud to run for the seat that you've vacated. Tell me about the injuries that you suffered on that uh, awful day. Well, I was shot twice, once in the face, um, and that, uh, that bullet went through my cheek, down my cheek, inside of it actually, and just came within a millimeter of my carotid artery. Otherwise, uh, if it had hit, I wouldn't be here talking to you tonight. Uh, the other injury uh, was in my uh, leg, my left leg. A bullet went through my thigh and severed the femoral uh, uh, vein, and uh, so I lost uh, quite a bit of blood uh, there on the ground at side of the, outside of the Safeway. Uh, I was very fortunate, uh, as many of us were, that citizen heroes, as they called them, came to our rescue. Uh, and my hero was a woman by the name of Anna Ballas, who held her hand, uh, her hands on the wound and staunched the bleeding. Uh, had she not done that, the doctors say I would have bled out very quickly. So that's what happened, and I've been recovering ever since. Uh, over the last year and two months, I've uh, been getting stronger and uh, really ready now to tackle uh, an adventure that I never thought I'd be on, quite frankly. I've never been interested in running for office. I'm not a political person. I've really dedicated my life to public service in various ways over the years, and certainly in the last five years working for the Congresswoman. Uh, but uh, I've decided that... Uh, uh, to honor her and her legacy and to try to do something for the people of Southern Arizona is the right thing to do right now. I feel ready to do it and um, announce my candidacy today. What is the spirit of America that you will be pushing to uh, to try, I suppose endure is the right word, you know, to, to keep alive? What is it that you want to bring to the political system that maybe isn't there at the moment in enough quantity? Well, I really uh, feel very strongly that the tone of our political discourse has gotten way out of control. Uh, certainly we saw that in the 2010 election. Uh, and after I was shot in, in the ICU with my family, uh, the first thing that came to me was uh, we have to do something if we can to change the tone. And so we established the Fund for Civility, Respect, and Understanding. And we're launching several projects. They're underway, an anti-bullying program, a mental health awareness program and an effort to bring civility and respect to the political process. So if my campaign is going to be about anything, it's going to be about civility and respect. But also there's some really serious issues that we need to tackle uh, in our district and in our country. And I want to dedicate myself to working across the aisle uh, with Republicans uh, uh, to do whatever I can to make sure we solve problems. There's been way too much bickering, way too much division, and way too much yelling and divisive conduct. We really need to come together. And Congresswoman Giffords, you know, is a great inspiration for that. When she went to the floor in August to cast her vote on the debt ceiling, uh, we saw how people came together, albeit for a short time. And I think her inspiration over the last year has been, America, we can come together. And she said it in her uh, resignation video, uh, together we can solve problems. And that's the spirit that I want to take forward. Uh, and she's been a great model for me and for many other Americans. I hope I can serve in that way.
Well, she's been an astonishing woman in many ways, I think, and her heroism, her fortitude, and the inspiration that she brings has been touching to everyone, I think, in America. And I'm sure that a lot of this will follow with you because it's such an extraordinary story. What advice has Gabby Giffords given you about the challenge now facing you in a, in a potential election? I have uh, just lost my microphone or my earpiece. I think you're asking what, uh, I think it's here somewhere. Find it. Okay, Don't I'm sorry, I, caught, I lost the last part of your Don't question. Worry. I'll just ask you what advice uh, Gabby Giffords may or may not have given you so far about the, the election challenge you're facing. Well, you know, the, the advice that she has given me has been advice that I've uh, gotten from her over the last five years. We always should take the high road. We should always try to find a way to come together and solve problems. She's uh, run and been successful on a very straightforward uh, uh, approach. Let's find common sense solutions to the problems that face America. Let's stop talking about it. Let's stop bickering about it. Let's just get down to solutions. And my entire life as a, in public service has been about that, been solving problems. When I work with people with developmental disabilities, when I worked before that in Head Start and other community programs, and it's certainly been the pattern that I've tried to follow in working with Congresswoman Giffords. So never get into the gutter. Uh, never try to demonize your opponent stick to the issues and look for issues on which we can come together and solve problems. So I've learned from her a tremendous amount over the last five years and hopefully that'll stand me in good stead as I go into this election campaign. Well, Ron Barber, it's a, a been a great joy to talk to you, I must say. I think it's an inspiring campaign. I wish you every success with it and, you know, to many people, you are a true all-American hero and very much what makes America such a great country and I appreciate you coming on to tell me uh, your plans and I wish you all the very best. It's very nice of you to have me and uh, it's going to be hard work, albeit a short period of time, only four and a half months from beginning to end. I hope people will uh, reach out and support me. Uh, I have a website up and running, uh, www.ronbarberforcongress.com and I would welcome support from people all across the spectrum. So thank you again for having me tonight. Well, I reckon you're going to get a few votes, Ron. I've just got a little inkling you're going to get a few votes here, and I wish you again the best of luck. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much, Pierce.